Welcome to the Swine Health Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine health research digested for you. My name is Dr. Clayton Johnson, and I'm the host of the podcast. Joining me for this week's episode is Dr. Jennifer Brown. Dr. Brown's a research scientist in ethology at the Prairie Swine Center. Dr. Brown, thank you very much for coming on to the podcast. It's a pleasure to have My you. Pleasure. I know you and I have worked together in the past, but for anybody that hasn't had the pleasure of meeting you or, or seeing your work before, why don't you give the audience a little background on yourself? Sure. Uh, yeah, I've been a research scientist in ethology, as you say, at Prairie Swine Center here in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, uh, for over 10 years now. Uh, and during that time, I've also been an adjunct professor at the University of Saskatchewan, uh, teaching students in animal poultry science. Uh, got graduate students here, and we've done a fair bit of work on many, many areas of swine research, uh, uh, looking at behavior and stress physiology, uh, right from, you know, uh, castration pain management, uh, which we've managed to implement here in Canada. Uh, group sow housing, an awful lot of work uh, on how we manage our sows in groups. Yep. And, uh, and also quite a lot of good work on on transport of market pigs and, and weanlings. At Essential Ag, pork production is our life. We understand the real world challenges producers face, and that is why we strive to bring research-driven solutions to the industry. The team at Essential Ag is working hard every day to find and deliver innovative technologies to you because we are passionate about solving your problems. You mentioned uh, having the opportunity to work with some producers on their sow housing strategies. Have you been able to measure the impact of stress as it relates to mixing bread sows? Have you been able to find any sort of production or economic impacts to the producer in your studies? Uh, yeah, well, recently we did we did a study trying to examine that early versus late mixing and static versus dynamic groups. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, there's very little literature on, on these different mixing regimes out there. Uh, certainly, you know, within a farm, it's very difficult to implement multiple different mixing regimes. Uh, so we were able to do that on our research herd. And, uh, initially we, we felt that, uh, those dynamic mixed groups, uh, might have a greater impact because you've got this repeated mixing event over time, uh, in that group versus a static group, which is, you know, uh, sows remaining in that same group from, you know, uh, uh, breeding or, or in the case of, of uh, late mixing uh, implantation to, to farrowing. But we did get some surprising results there, Clayton. Um, the, uh, the dynamic group actually had the best uh, farrowing rate uh, and, uh, and the static group that was mixed early, uh, they had the, they, their farrowing rate was severely impacted. And it, it was surprising to us when we... Um, tried to figure out what, what the cause of that impact on their sharing rate was. Uh, we, we, do, uh, done some videotaping of the mixing event and the initial mixing aggression in that early mixed, uh, static group was, uh, you know, uh, two or threefold higher than in the other two groups, which was quite surprising. Um, and, and then it shows that that acute stress shortly after breeding, is a very sensitive period, right? Um, and in our system, we have a free access stalls, but, but we didn't let the sows use the free access stalls. We wanted to force them into, into a group uh, because certainly, as many people will know, uh, if they have access to those free access stalls, they do spend a lot of time in them, right? Yeah. So not, not really representative of, of sows in a group. Uh, so we did use those feeding stalls to feed them every morning, so we kind of took out any element of, of feed competition that you would see around an ESF feeder. Everybody was fed in the morning, but as soon as, uh, you know, the feeding was done, we, we pushed them out of the stalls and walked the stalls uh, and, until the following morning. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, yeah. So we did, again, control for that feeding because I do think with ESF, you've got that uh, more of a social pressure and, and uh, you might not. Uh, see, especially the younger parity sows, uh, access the feeder every day. And we know that that can impact them. So we controlled for that. But uh, yeah, it was ex interesting to see those that uh, early mixed static group uh, severely impacted. 
And then when we looked at the behavior of the dynamic sows at mixing, certainly you could see that the that the pressure of mixing was much reduced because uh, you know we we replaced one third of the group at a time, so these were these were smaller groups, twenty five uh, sows per pen. Uh, so we would be adding eight to ten sows in that dynamic group, and so the rest of the sows were already formed, had already formed that group, and so the newer ones were introduced, and so that mixing event really was was much less uh, stressful on them, and they and they actually achieved the highest farrowing rate. And then if we looked at the uh, the litter characteristics, there were no no significant differences. In any of the litter, litter characteristics, total born, live born, uh, still born, slightly reduced in the early mixing treatment, especially the dynamics. And we've seen this also in some other studies. And I don't know if, if you do, uh, I've asked uh, producers and, and vets at AASP if they can uh, kind of explain what would be going on that would reduce uh, uh, a still born rate, especially in those especially noticeable in the older sows where we obviously see an increase in stillborns. Uh, so that that's that's quite fascinating and we have seen it in other studies that early mixing does seem to uh, uh, cause a reduction in stillborns. My, my only uh, explanation for it could be that uh, uh, you know that a- activity early on in in gestation is is maybe causing a better distribution of of embryos along the uterine horns, or maybe a better uh, placental attachment. But yeah, we really haven't been able to investigate it. It's kind of hard to uh, to see what's going on in those early stages. But yeah, some very interesting results and and really highlighting that, uh, yeah, you want to avoid that acute stress at, at mixing. Uh, otherwise, you're going to have your seer production impacted. Well, I think producers, you know, that are transitioning to Prop 12 are particularly worried about that stress right after the breeding time. You know, to your point, that's a bad time for stress. We've got implant, implantation going on. Um, we had uh, Dr. Ashley Wagner on the pad, podcast here a few weeks back, and she talked about um, a product that they've got that uh, they have seen some nice benefits for heat stress. I know you've done some work with that product as it looks to aggression and post-mixing can you tell us a little bit about that research you've done with that that same product? Sure. Yeah, uh, uh, we used it uh, a few years ago, looking at finisher pigs, and then I also have a, have a student doing an enrichment project who's using this uh, product. Uh, they're calling it CCC. It's a, a citrus-based uh, olfaction. You know, it all breaks through the olfactory uh, processes. It's got a nice odor to it. Uh, but yeah, in that earlier study. Uh, we use finisher pigs as basically a, a, a model for our aggression, uh, and I'm sure it probably uh, would would uh, carry over into sows. Um, and uh, so we had uh, our pens had groups of five five finisher pigs, and we would shift three for one pen in, into the next pen, and the next pen would get the next three. Uh, so this uh, mixing event would occur with the finisher pigs. Um, and w- one thing about uh, these olfactory uh, substances is that they're kind of tricky to do research on because you can't really uh, have pens with and without in the same room because they're all going to be impacted by this by this odor. Uh, so we had one room that had no no odor uh, provided, and then in the other room we used the the CCC, but uh, it was diluted in the in the water supply, so very very simple to implement and. Uh, so we we be uh, videotaped those pigs uh, right at at the mixing, and then also did some lesion scoring on them. And uh, even with a small sample size, we did see a very significant impact uh, re- reduction in aggression in those in those pigs. Uh, yeah, and, and certainly it's a it's a little studied area and has some has its own uh, challenges. But yeah, we were very in, impressed with that uh, that initial work. Uh, and the impact on the aggressive behavior. You know, I, I don't think we really fully understand the mechanism uh, at this point. But uh, yeah, it was it was nice to see. Uh, and but we have not uh, carried that on into our sow room. All of our uh, gestation occurs in one room, so we don't really have an opportunity to to separate uh, sows with and without that that uh, treatment in our barn. Uh, but it would be very interesting, I think. Uh, 
And then more recently, yeah, I, I do have a master's student right now, and she's um, she's doing studying enrichment right from uh, early on until until uh, going to the packing plant uh, where we're getting uh, you know uh, meat quality measures uh, because a lot of enrichment work uh, certainly in Europe uh, has, has gone on and typically focusing on a very small period of of growth. Uh, and really to see the the impact, you really want to take them out to the finishing stage. And um, so, yeah, she'll, she'll be finishing those studies this fall. What she's doing is uh, uh, spraying p- plain uh, newsprint with, with, the, with the odor. Then she lets it dry and, and provides that uh, just as a periodic enrichment three times a week uh, to, those, to those pigs. Um, so, yeah, I, I don't have a... No, no spoiler alert at this time, but uh, uh, yeah, those pigs are have been doing well, and we're we're very keen to see the the final results there. Well, we look forward to having you back on the podcast once that study gets done, and you can give us the update at that time. How about that? My pleasure. Yeah, that would be great. JBI helps swine producers fight against harmful pathogens with the forming power of D seven disinfectant. JBI helps treat or prevent costly outbreaks and assure eco-friendly biosecurity on farm and transport. Safe and effective against PED, PRRS, E. coli, Salmonella, and other illness-causing pathogens. D7 is non-toxic, providing a safer environment for your employees, low corrosive to equipment, and breaks down biofilms. Learn more at jbidistributors.com. Well, it's um, really been enlightening to have you come on and talk about stress in general, and that it's very topical right now um, for U.S. producers. But as I understand it, California is looking to Canada, to Mexico. They're fine with meat coming in from anywhere as long as it qualifies for the Prop 12 program. So really for producers throughout North America, they're looking for solutions to the stress situation and appreciate the work that you've done with stress in general and then with the CCC product. Uh, Really appreciate you coming on the podcast today. My, my pleasure, Clayton. I hope just to speak with you again sometime. Absolutely. Well, to our audience, thank you very much for being a part of the show. Um, please do subscribe to the podcast so that you don't miss out on every episode we put out uh, every Friday. Check out our website, swinehealthblackbelt.com. If you haven't been there, um, you can find access to all the historical podcasts that we put out. Um, and for uh, Dr. Jennifer Brown, I'm Clayton Johnson. We really appreciate you joining us today, and please have a great rest of your week. Hey, everybody. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine health related research trial and would like to come on the show and talk about it, share it with us, please feel free to email the research to hello at wisenetics.com. That's H-E-L-L-O at W-I-S-E-N-E-T-I-X dot com.